This is a good radio, and it keeps getting better. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Real quick, before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. This UV Pro is a really good radio. Now, it's not perfect, but they keep improving it all the time, and they're listening to consumers' feedback. And to me, that is a huge bonus. Now, one of my complaints in the past has been the lack of smart beaconing on the UV Pro. And guys, do note that this covers the VGC version of this radio as well. They're running identical, as far as I can tell anyway, firmwares. But with this latest beta firmware version, we now have smart beaconing available to us on the UV Pro. Now, you might be asking, why is smart beaconing so important? And let me explain to you the two different types, primarily of position reporting that is available on radios. So you've got auto beaconing, and with auto beaconing, you just set up a timed interval to send out your position location or your position packet. Now, that uh, let's say you set that at every two minutes. Well, if you're traveling down the interstate at 70 miles an hour, think about how long you've gone from one packet to the time the next packet is sent out. That's going to be a little over two miles that you've traveled between those packets, and that's assuming that every single packet gets heard. So you can see how that would not be enough packets going out to give someone a precise location if they needed it. Now, on the flip side of that with auto beaconing, let's say you're sitting still somewhere. Do we really need to transmit that position report every two minutes if you haven't moved? No, at that point, all you're doing is killing battery. So that's where smart beaconing comes into play. With smart beaconing, it's based on your rate of travel. So the faster you're moving, the more frequent the radio is going to broadcast your position report. And the slower you're moving, the less often it's going to transmit that position report. So if you're just sitting still somewhere, that can really save your battery life because this radio now goes back to only beaconing about once every 20 to 30 minutes if you're sitting still in just one location. And I did some testing on this very briefly, but I did get out and test how well it worked. So I connected this radio to my wife's car, drove around for about 10 minutes, and took a look at the position reports that I was seeing on the map and it was beaconing every bit as often as one of my Yezer radios or even the Kenwood. Then I put this radio on the table here and let it broadcast overnight while it was just sitting still. And you can see from this uh, packet capture right here that roughly it is transmitting every 30 minutes. Now, one thing that is missing on this that we find on the Yezus and the Kenwoods is the ability to change the properties of smart beaconing. So on uh, Yezus and Kenwoods, we can go in there and kind of configure various things like the slow uh, travel rate, the high travel rate, the turn directions, turn slopes, things of that nature. So it is more customizable on the Yezus and the Kenwoods, but I have found that it's perfectly adequate in its settings that comes right from uh, the firmware on the UV Pro. So it really doesn't matter that we don't have those customizations available to us. Maybe, maybe in a future firmware upgrade, we will also get those customizations. Now, there's still a few things that I'm just not crazy about with this radio. First of all, it will not display objects in your station list on the radio. And the other big thing for me is it mixes the station list and any APRS messages in the exact same list instead of separating those out into two separate lists. I really would like to see them separate those out so that it's easier to find things. The other thing is we're limited to only 30 stations in our station list. And if we turn the radio off, we're going to lose that station list. So a few things that I think they can work out in the future. 
Although the limit of the station list, and guys, I'm just guessing here, but the limit of the station list might be because they didn't put enough memory in this radio. So we might be running up into a hardware limit instead of something that can be fixed in firmware. But remember, this is a first gen radio and they gave us a Bluetooth TNC that we could access from our phone and from our laptops. And that's something that Yezu has yet to accomplish. And if they got this close on a first generation radio, I can't wait to see what Gen 2 looks like. Guys, if you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.